when we thought about this theme, wonder, and you might see that we flipped the script on our name tags, literally turned it on its side to wonder what this world could look like without XYZ. Uh, some of you took it to be a positive thing, like myself, uh, saying plastic, even though I'm wearing these turtle killers on my back. Uh, and some of you said like things that you can't do without coffee. So what I like about uh, wonder and, and, and wondering these things is it plays really neatly into our speaker, Mama Celeste, who is a co-founder of Oaklash. Drag, if you've never had the experience of experiencing it, it does create this wonderful feeling in your sternum of what is possible. It is a space where artists uh, come on stage and represent and challenge all of those things, all of this baggage that we have as society, and it makes this safe and challenging space to examine that. So without further ado, please give a very warm Oakland welcome to Mama Celeste. Thank you, Daniel. Good morning, how's everyone doing? Sorry, I, I know Daniel's in more drag than I am, but I'm still a drag queen. How's everyone doing? <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh, and happy Pride, everyone. It's Pride weekend. I think that's the other reason why a drag queen makes sense for today. So today's theme is wonder. Um, as in, I wonder how I was picked to be here today. My name is Gray Tartaglione. I'm, uh, by day, I'm the Senior Communications Associate at an organization called IMPACT. Um, we're a gay men's global health advocacy uh, organization based right here in Oakland. Um, and by night, I go by the name Mama Celeste. And together with my good Judy Beatrix Lahane, we are the co-founders of Oaklash, the Bay Area's first and only drag festival, which is pretty crazy. We just wrapped our second event this April. We had uh, over a hundred DJs, dancers, drag queens, drag kings, uh, performers of all types from the Bay Area and beyond uh, this year, and over a thousand attendees over the course of our three-day event, which is pretty incredible. Um, and I think we have a little video. Hi, I'm Mama Celeste. And unfortunately, I'm a drag queen. <laughs> I'm the co-founder of Oaklash, the Bay Area's drag festival. We knew there was a niche that needed to be filled in the Bay. We knew that there was a lot of amazing performance here and a real rich history of drag performance in the Bay Area that needed to be celebrated in a way that it hadn't been yet. It's a three-day festival and you're looking at a baby. <laughs> drag, in its essence, is about illusion. People think it's about going from one gender to the next, but really it's about embodying your own imagination. This radical act of transforming yourself into whatever you want to be. And when you see a drag queen in front of you, there is that sense of amazement and of wonder and shows us that everything is an illusion. Drag is not something that gets the same recognition as a lot of arts. These queens and kings are making culture. And I think it's really important that people consider it an art the same way as anything else. So now you've been to Oaklash. Um, thank you to my good friends at Tiny Oak Media for making me sound really smart and look really cute. <laughs> so, I wonder, how many of you have been to a drag show before? Oh my god, amazing! <laughs> I love that. So then you know that if you go to a drag show, there's a few rules that any host will give you before you start the show. Number one, we want you to tip your performers, as in support local artists. Number two, make lots of noise, as in right now. And number three, of course, take lots of photos. Please use flash, so that I look cute. And tag me on Instagram. Before I go any further, I want to make sure we all have a shared understanding of what is drag. Maybe this is where we can ask some people in the audience. Anybody have an idea? You can raise your hand. What is drag? What do you when you think of drag? What do you think of? Glitz and glam. Ooh, yes, love that. Adult make believe. Ooh, love that. Some people like to say transformation. I like to think of amplification of who you are at your core. Ah, oh. you guys are killing it. <laughs> Shape-shifting. Ooh, absolutely. So let's ask the experts, shall we? Sasha Velour, winner of season nine of RuPaul's Drag Race, love her, says that drag is the art form of the queer imagination, which I believe is based on a quote from RuPaul on Ricky Lake, where she said, <laughs> when you become the image of your own imagination, it's the most powerful thing that you could ever do. 
And just for the sake of you being able to leave today and say that Mama Celeste said, drag is the art of transforming yourself into the embodiment of your own imagination. And this is where I think the idea of wonder comes into play. In some sense, drag really is about keeping wonder alive and about staying curious and harnessing your curiosity to imagine a world beyond social norms. Then you take that and you manifest that and you transform through things like costume, through makeup, um, through wigs, pig snouts, and it's pretty awe-inspiring and wonderful to watch as well. Especially in the Bay Area, I think that drag has very little to do with gender. We have our campy queens, of course, and we have our rebel kings. We've got monsters and animals. We've got demons and freaks and idiots and <laughs> they thems. And it just has very little to do with what's in somebody's pants and everything to do with what they're willing to give out on a stage. One of my favorite quotes from Oaklash this year was local performer Jillian Narling, dressed here as a killer bunny, who said, drag isn't just when you pull your dick back between your butt cheeks and then you tape it there. <laughs> drag is a fantasy for all folks with everything between their legs and upon their heads. Personally, I like to say that I am not a female impersonator. I'm a female impersonator impersonator. <laughs> I keep my mustache. I have a big hairy chest. I may look like a beautiful woman, um, but that's because drag has historically used femininity and feminine clothing because it's a little more over the top. It's a little bit more fun and femininity has power. And so I wanna celebrate that. I started doing drag in 2012 at the age of 19. Thank you, I know. Isn't she cute? I was living in New York at the time and I remember I was so excited to try drag. Um, I was a big fan of Drag Race since season one, um, but now I was in college and I had a little bit more freedom to explore with my gender. So th at the start of sophomore year, a friend and I went to the Claire's at the mall in town, um, and I got my ears pierced uh, in hopes that the holes would heal by Halloween, and I could stick in some big gaudy jewels and live my Elizabeth Taylor white diamond fantasy. <laughs> but let's be real, I could not wait that long. So after we got my ears done, we rushed back to school. My friend put me in this slinky little sequin gown, a raggedy fur, Pushed my hair back with a hairband, some chapstick, some mascara, and a lot of blush. And she had arrived. <laughs> Frankly, back then, I did not understand what I was doing, quite like what I had explained before. Drag was kind of just fun. It was silly, and just looking at myself in a mirror was a whole crazy experience. Also, it helped me and my friends sneak into bars underage, so that was helpful. <laughs> Drag was like a superpower. Um, I was a pretty quiet kid, honestly, um, and suddenly people started paying attention to me. I was being asked to be in people's photo projects and music videos and their shows, and drag really helped me break out of my shell. I had always kind of wanted to be an artist, but I never really felt like I had anything to make art about. I wanted to be a painter, but I remember feeling like there was just too much potential in a blank canvas for me to see anything worth painting. And so making myself the canvas was now the only thing that made sense. When I moved to the Bay Area in 2015, I really knew nobody. I was living on my sister and her husband's couch, and I had left my wigs on the East Coast. But one Friday night, I borrowed their car and I disappeared up to the stud bar in San Francisco, uh, which was the first thing that came up when I Googled uh, drag bar San Francisco. <laughs> there I saw Glamamore, mother of the House of Moore, uh, Dulce de Leche, the full figure drag queen who demanded that the audience have her stage dive across the bar, <laughs> and Laundry Time, SF's wig enchantress, who quickly adopted me into her drag family. And it was there for the first time that I really felt like I had found my community. So the next time I was on the East Coast, I took all my wigs, shoved them in a suitcase, and ran back to California to make my mark. Basically all the great things that I've done in drag, I've kind of stumbled into, in the same way that I stumbled into that bar, and the same way that I stumbled in my first pair of high heels. It always kind of began with an idea that seemed too stupid, or impossible, or crazy to attempt. What if 
we dressed up like clowns and tried to sneak into the bars. What if uh, that floral centerpiece on that table was a Carmen Miranda headdress? <laughs> what if I did an Andrea Bocelli opera ballad as a sexy housewife waiting for the pizza boy to come pour marinara sauce on my head? <laughs> Or what if instead of throwing another drag show, we threw a whole goddamn drag festival? Yes. And it really was exactly that type of drunken brain fart at 2 a.m. in the back of some dingy bar that created Oaklash. We started Oaklash because we saw a niche that needed to be filled. Drag is having this huge upsurge in mainstream popularity thanks to RuPaul's Drag Race, but to this date, there's only been one queen from the Bay Area on that show. Things like YouTube and Instagram are giving huge national exposure to makeup artists and comedians, but it doesn't represent every type of drag. And frankly, drag through a screen is a completely different experience than when you're at a show with the seven foot tall drag queen in front of you sweating and spitting on you in the front row. <laughs> Oaklash wanted uh, aimed to celebrate the messy and the beautiful, the political, the in-your-face, and the boundary-pushing drag that we love out here. It was also about pushing the idea of what drag could be itself. Why wait for RuPaul? Why not just build our own damn empire? Yeah. And Oaklash is pretty wonderful because it brings together all types of people that don't normally interact even within the queer scene. It puts uh, pageant queens with drag kings and Castro queens with Oakland queens, burlesque performers with Vogue dancers. It's a 101 lesson in the history of Bay Area's queer performance and it's also the best of the artists who are making the future of performance out here. Who remembers my rules from before? What's the first thing that you do when you go to a drag show? Tip your queens, yes, and kings. And Oaklash for us is really about contextualizing nightlife performance as an art. Frankly, starting this festival was not easy. Drag is having this huge mainstream uptick, but it's not an, an easy pitch to get funding, to encourage people to uh, invest in drag as an art. And so what we had to do was really depend on our community here in Oakland to make it possible to donate equipment, to donate their time, and to donate uh, even the venues that we performed at. The second thing that drag teaches us is to make a lot of noise, and I wanna emphasize this on Pride Weekend, that we should not let social norms limit us, and that we should dare to explore what could be in this world. Drag has always been political, and we need people to riot right now and be willing to change the status quo. And lastly, I want to leave you with an invitation to the wonderful world of drag. Come to a drag show. Drag is much more interesting when you're actually there live and in person. And drag is really about this idea of presence and of performing in the present. It's kind of ethereal and it's not uh, something that can be recreated through, you know, reality TV, basically. Drag can open your mind and it can push your taboos uh, about sex and about identity and about uh, expression and about gender. And it asks you to stay curious. What if there was no gender? What if nothing was holding you back? What if America's Next Drag Superstar was in this very room right now? <laughs> and with that, I will leave you one more time. Follow me on Instagram. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>